Hi everyone, Brittany Brown here, founder over at Eating Binge Eating, and we have Christine with us. Christine, so awesome to have you here. Hi, good to see you. <laughs> you too, you too. So, okay, everyone, this interview is going to be incredible. Christine's actually still in our program. She's in the last week-ish of her 12-week journey with us, and she has had such a 180 that we wanted to get her on an interview immediately. Um, her and I were on a call earlier today. And she was sharing how she just couldn't believe that her anxiety and food fears and all this chaos in her mind about food has just pretty much been eradicated without having to like control it. It's just naturally lifted in a short span of time. And so um, really excited. So Christine's background had been struggling since she was about nine-ish years old with body image and things like that. And then as she moved out on her own, um, you know, isolation, shame, I'm sure you or anyone can relate with that. I know I can. And the binge eating started getting out of control when she was on her own. So going to kind of dive into Christine's journey a bit. And also, since you did shift so much in a short span of time, um, we'll highlight like those mindset shifts, those things that really works for you. So anyone watching can learn. So we'll go ahead and dive in. So awesome, Christine. I mean, we could start anywhere, but I think we should start with um, like, life before the program, you know, what, what did that look like for you? Um, life and food, like the whole picture kind of. Definitely. Um, so number one, I would say food obsessed. So I was kind of in a cycle where every time I ate or made food choices, I was so fearful of how it would affect my body and whether or not I'd gain weight from whatever I ate. So that took up so much space in my mind. That was kind of like something that was always in the back of my mind. So by the time I registered for the program, I think I had realized, okay, this is taking up so much of my life. And if I'm ever going to move forward in all of the ways that I want to, if I'm ever going to achieve what I want to achieve, I can't do it if this weight is on me of, of, of my mind being so cluttered with thoughts of food and guilt and all of these cycles. So it really prevented me from being present and being spontaneous with my life because everything was about planning my food choices. Um, and so there is that. And then there's also like the secretive, like shameful aspect of it. I never discussed with a single person that I had this relationship with food. Like nobody ever knew. Um, I really thought I was the only one that had crazy food thoughts. So that's another thing about the program. The fact that there was all these women who were echoing exactly how I felt was wild because no one in my life had, was weird with food except for me. So, um, there was just a lot of shame. So again, more stuff weighing me down. And then I was also kind of like in a cycle, never ending cycle of disappointment because I had and hopelessness pretty much because I had tried so many diets, so many eating plans, clean eating, um, preparing my food on a Sunday for the entire week. Oh my God. It was like, every time I found a new eating plan, I had all this hope of like, this is going to be it for me. This is what's going to get me that body that I am, you know, wanting. And then it would always end in just me overeating, emotional eating, losing control with food. So I think it just was a lot of disappointment and hopelessness. And I had this mindset of, I'll be happy when, when I achieve that physique, then I'll start treating myself nicely. Then I'll start living my life. And this is the summer. This is the summer. I'm going to look good in a bathing suit. And it's kind of like this hope. And then the time would pass and I still wasn't there. So that was my life pretty much before the program. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I think so many women can relate to that. I know with my journey, it was virtually like the same, to be honest. It was that constant struggle that even if I wasn't binging, I was obsessing about food. I was worried about food, whatever that might be, you know? So yeah, I know so many women will be able to relate to that. And I love what you said about um, the like secrecy piece and just the value of feeling like there's, other, oh, there's other people. Like it, it takes some of that shame away. And like, I think binge eating, disordered eating lives like in shame, you know, that's where it like thrives. If it was like a fire, that would be like gasoline to the fire. Right. So 
um, having that dissipate, working through that shame through a community is so powerful. So, okay. So 12 weeks, which is not that long. Um, what's different? Like what's life like? What's your relationship with food like? Um, yeah, I'd love to hear about that. Okay. So number one, I have peace of mind. I was saying this on the call earlier today, but um, a really big weight has been lifted. I feel freedom for the first time in as long as I can remember. So at this point, I'm not thinking about food unless I'm starting to get hungry and then it's time to eat. So there's no preoccupation with my food choices. I'm not overanalyzing nutrition content of everything I put in my mouth. I'm not Googling dishes before I go to the restaurant to make sure that I can choose the healthiest thing off the menu and overanalyzing all of that. So I'm leaving the house now for the first time without wondering where my next meal is going to come from and, and what it's going to be. So there's a lot more space in my mind for other things that are more important. Um, there's just a lot of space now. So the second thing is that I have no desire to diet, to start another meal plan, and to do any 90-day bikini body challenge, like all this stuff that kind of pops out at you on the internet. And you're like, Oh, what is that? Maybe that's going to transform my life. Like I have no pull toward that. Um, I'm making those decisions when it comes to exercise and what I eat from a completely different place now. And I think that's like a huge game changer is I'm um, asking myself if I can eat whatever I want what do I actually really want to eat? Number one. Number two, if I'm exercising to actually feel good and move my body, what type of movement do I actually want to do? Which is very different from what I was doing before with killing myself in the weight room and doing all these like masculine, like weightlifting this and that, uh, which is fine. But now I'm taking dance classes and trying to do things that really actually I enjoy versus what Instagram is telling me I need to do. Um, and then another thing is I'm really actually in touch with my body now and, and my cues. Like I really lost all awareness of my body. So obviously if you're dieting, you're telling yourself when you can and cannot eat. You're not listening to when you're actually hungry. And when you're killing yourself in the gym, you're not listening to what your body actually wants to do and what it needs and whether it's tired or not. So I was very disconnected for a while there. And that's why I was, when we got into the part of the program where we're talking about getting in touch with um, our cues again and knowing when we're hungry and knowing what we want to eat, I was like, there's no way. Like I've read about intuitive eating. My body would never tell me the, you know, I can't listen to my body. I can't get still enough to know what my body actually wants. So I thought that was a lost cause, but then slowly it started to happen where I did get the cues. I knew what was making my stomach upset. I knew when I had had enough, all of that stuff slowly started to come back. And that was within this period. So it happened really fast and it kind of snuck up on me. So that was surprising. Um, and then the biggest thing too, last but not least, and this is the way that the, the program's kind of structured, but my mindset shift around my appearance. So um, I'm way less concerned with how I feel. Um, I'm way less concerned with how I look on the outside versus how I feel on the inside. So I'm just, just think I've had this mindset shift of like, okay, if I feel good, something is going to emanate out of me to the world that's unspoken or unseen or whatever. And people will pick up on that. And little things have been happening since I've done this program of like, of other people catching on to that energy. And it, it's so true that even people, when they lose all this weight or when they achieve this goal weight and they're still not happy, that's a big indicator that it is more of an internal thing that we should all be trying to, to achieve. Like a woman actually in New York came up to me randomly and was like, you have a great aura. And I'm like, Oh my God, I'm good. I'm working on it. So I guess something's happening. Like people, um, catch on to how you're feeling on the inside. They're not so much always fixated on the outside. And I think once I 
had that shift. I was like, I'm more accepting of myself. I'm way less hard on myself. And I, I've really started to partner with my body in a way that I did not think was possible. So. Mm, that's beautiful. There are like so many nuggets of wisdom there. I mean, we could just like complete the interview right there. Um, I know everyone's going to get so much value out of that. And there's so much that stuck out to me, but I think one piece, um, I mean, uh, the, the aura and the body part is just really beautiful, you know, and it's not to say that your body doesn't change, right? I think sometimes when people hear these things, they're like, well, if I accept my body as it is, it's never going to change. It's never going to shift or whatever that might be. And that's not true. Like you can still feel and be radiant from the inside out while releasing weight, while not releasing weight. Like it's all fair game to whatever is natural for your body. Um, and then another thing I really like that you said is I think a lot of times when people hear stop dieting, they uh, feel like, oh gosh, this coach is going to tell me to just eat whatever I want. And you know, like my, I'm going to gain so much weight and all of this, but you, your example, like you kind of had those fears, but you're like, and like, this isn't going to work for me. I'm not going to, my hunger fullness cues aren't going to come here. Like I've tried this stuff before. And then the way it's presented over time as you're practicing, um, it starts to happen and things do get easier. So thank you for sharing that. Cause I think those are some of the biggest fears that people have. And you just, talked about how you kind of kept the faith and overcame them, which is awesome. That was my biggest fear was the fear of weight gain. I'm going to be honest with you. When I started the program, I was so freaked out by um, the thought of releasing restriction and allowing myself to eat foods that I have been um, restricting myself from that. I actually had a day or two where I said to myself, well, I'm going to cancel all my plans this summer. Cause I, of course I start this program right before the summer. So my mindset was already, already in overdrive of how I was going to lose weight for the summer. And then I go into this program. So I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm going to cancel all my plans for the summer. Um, I, I'm going to think of all these excuses to cancel on my friends because I don't want to go out and be seen because if I'm going to do this program, I'm going to gain this weight and I'm going to be ashamed to go out. Like that's how strong that reaction was to the first step of the program, releasing restrictions. So I get it that it is super scary and there's a lot of resistance to it, but none of that happened. If anything, it allowed me to show up in a completely entire, entirely different way with my friends without caring about what I looked like. So I get it. It's terrifying, but nothing that you're afraid of is actually going to happen by releasing restriction. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Just to repeat, that means that Christine went through the program, released restriction and did not like need to cancel summer plans, didn't gain a bunch of weeds. Um, if anything, felt more confident when you were doing things. And yeah, I think a lot of people just don't, they hear release restriction and they just think like the very worst, right? And I totally get it. Honestly, at parts of my journey, I, if a coach would have told me that, I'd have been like, this woman's crazy. I'm quitting. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's more than releasing restriction. It's truly just the present moment choices and connecting with yourself and your body, not operating on a diet. And then diets make you binge anyway, you know, so which equals more weight gain and all that stuff we don't want. So, okay, this has been really, really incredible. Um, you know, I know you've already shared a lot of nuggets of wisdom. Anything else to share in regards of like, um, you know, your biggest takeaways, whether it's body image, whether it's food, whether it's life, like maybe a tool or two. Um, yeah, before we kind of wrap up. Um, like a tool, like. Or just really what works for you, you know, like any, and it could just be, you know, one thing, like if you, if you're like the thing that works for me the most is, is blank, anything like that. Um, I think showing up is obviously really important with this program. Like when I first got into the program, I was really intimidated about talking to a group of strangers from around the country about my weight problem, my, my body image problem, stuff like that. So that was intimidating but I kept trying to post in the group and then also comment support for the other girls too so 
I think showing up even though you don't really want to is a big one. And I think just trusting, knowing that whatever happens is okay, that it's all going to turn out for the best. Even if your journey doesn't look like the next woman's journey in the program, like it will all work itself out a hundred percent. So just trust the process. Mm, yeah. I love that. And I think, um, I think that's just how it goes with anything. Right. But yeah, definitely trusting the process is so important. So I'm curious, you know, since you had been struggling with this for so long, like even since childhood, especially some of the body stuff, um, and you tried a lot of different diets and so forth to get to the other side of it. What do you feel like made our program different or like stuck out to you that actually was like, whoa, like this is really landing. This is really resonating. Cause I know you've tried a ton of different beyond just dieting. I know you've studied a bunch around binge eating and so forth. Yeah. So what made it all just kind of come together for you? I think it's really like the structure of the program um, and the order in which you try to do things. Like I'm a big um, reader, so I would read a ton and gain a bunch of information. But after you do that on your own, it's really hard to know what to do, what to do first, what to do next. So the fact that this is a guided process that's stretched out over a certain period of time you have time to implement what you've learned and then it layers on top of one another. And then by the end, you're like, wow, everything is different. And I'm not really sure why, but it is. So it's definitely the structure of the program. It's the support. It's the feeling of not being alone because there's so many women who deal with the exact same issues. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Mm, I love that. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I've redone the program and my coaching numerous times over the years. And that's the thing that I think like really sticks out is um, like the different tools and things, but the reason it works so well is the order of things. And, you know, phase two doesn't work without phase one and phase three doesn't work without those two mastered. And it all does layer on. And, um, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but the program was actually built live. So I built this program and then there were 20 women that ran through it and I adjusted it based on um, like they would get module one on like a Monday and then I didn't build the next module till like Thursday. So I got feedback, saw all their struggles, all their fears, and then like built the next module off of our system, of course, but also in accordance with those common fears that come up. And so I think that's also why it has that feeling of like, whoa, module two just answered everything that I was scared about in module one or whatever that might be. So, okay, that's, that's awesome, Christine. So, um, yeah, this has been incredible. Uh, you know, before we go, anything else you want to share, maybe to like that person that comes across our stuff the first time and is like, who are these people? I'm scared. i am tried a million things. You know, you know how it is when you um, get to that place. So, yeah, any word of wisdom or any last thing you want to share? Um. Definitely just leap before you look the way I did. I, I found you online, we're from completely different parts of the country, but I had a gut feeling that this was going to be the program that was going to work for me, A. B, I, from listening to your story, I knew that you had been through a lot worse in terms of, you know, the cycles you have been through and that you had overcome it and helped hundreds of other women overcome it. So why would my case be any different? Right. So just, I would say, go for it. Don't hesitate. Don't wait any longer. Just do it because I feel like it was the best decision that I have ever made. So everyone deserves that, that freedom. So, yeah. Mm, that's beautiful, Christine. Thank you. Um, props to you for trusting that little intuitive nudge and just jumping in. And it's been absolutely incredible to watch your journey. I feel like it's gone so fast. Like when you jumped on the call, I saw your name in the calendar and then you were on the call today and I was like, it's her 12th week. Oh my goodness. Like it flew by, but it's just been incredible to watch you grow and transcend everything so quickly and show up in the way that you have. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for doing this. I know, um, it's going to be very, very inspiring, but like so many tools for people to take away from this interview. So yeah, this was awesome. Yes. Thank you so much. All right, guys. Well, thank you for watching. We're going to go ahead and sign off, but Christine, thank you. I hope you enjoyed this interview. And also, um, 
below this video, there will be a little button. And if you do want to find the same type of freedom that Christine found, click that little button. There's a whole training video for you to learn more um, with some actual values so you can learn and be supported on your struggle. And then if you do want to speak with us through that link, you'll um, be taken to our schedule and we can have a uh, little breakthrough call completely free. So awesome, Christine. This is amazing. And bye, guys.